In this video, I want to show you just the very basics on how to calculate theoretical yield. I'm not going to spend the time to calculate the moles of the sodium hydroxide, hydrochloric acid, water, or potassium permanganate, and other, all the other things in your reaction mixture. Um, when you read a procedure, it'll often say one of the reagents is used in large excess. That's the potassium permanganate. That's not our limiting reactant. The limiting reactant is toluene. We're synthesizing benzoic acid. All the information we need here is on the board. So this is what we're starting with. We mix one milliliter of toluene, three grams of potassium permanganate, and a whole bunch of other stuff and do a whole bunch of procedures to get the product at the end. This is the amount we obtained, okay, from an actual experiment. So we use this number here, which is the limiting reactant. Usually in a procedure, you're gonna know what that's going to be. It's usually the organic molecule if you're taking organic chemistry in organic chemistry lab. So 1.0 milliliters is going to be converted to grams using the density because it's a liquid substance. You can get this from many different uh, scientific handouts, Merck Index, CRC, Index of Physics and Chemistry, uh, Wikipedia, ChemSpider, and even sometimes the reagent bottle itself. So that will get us grams. Now to get moles, we convert to moles using the molar mass. Okay. So one mole of toluene is that many grams, so the grams is gonna cancel now. And then we look at the uh, stoichiometry of the balanced chemical equation. Organic chemistry reactions are very simple, most often because you're going from one thing to one thing. So there's gonna be one mole of benzoic acid. That's going to form for each mole of toluene that you have. Okay, so we're not gonna multiply by one and divide by one on our calculator, but you know, the units are there so you can see how this is working. Now we use the molar mass of benzoic acid here. Um, that's the molar mass, you know, you count up the atoms and you use your periodic table if it's not given to you. Or you, you can go online and look up the molar mass as well. So this has a molar mass of 122.13 grams per mole. And this will give you the theoretical yield. And remember, that's how much you should produce if all your processes were 100% efficient. After punching this in on my calculator, I find 1.15 grams. And that's the theoretical yield. Now, you normally figure that out before you start an experiment. You set up your lab notebook and you know you have everything tidied as you know. And then uh, you do the lab experiment and then you realize, oh, I didn't do as well as I thought I did. Um, you get 1.02 grams, for example. So here we wanna calculate the percent yield. And that's going to be equal to 1.02 grams divided by 1.15 grams. Okay, so we're gonna, you know, that fraction can be expressed as a percent by moving the decimal place over uh, two times, right? So the times 100% there is, is not something we, uh, don't hit the percent key on your calculator. Uh, so what we do is we type in 1.02 divided by 1.15 and you get 0.88 something on your calculator there. And so you wanna move the decimal place over two uh, places and it's easier to just type 100 sometimes on your calculator and you get 88.69 something percent, okay? Uh, probably you wanna round this off to uh, the nearest percent, two sig figs. So I'm gonna write 89%, which is a decent yield. You can write the percent 
uh, symbol there, and then write yield so we know what we're talking about, okay? So that's how you calculate percent yield from theoretical yield and actual data. And this is how you calculate the theoretical yield from the uh, molar mass, density, things like that. So I think with the two examples I showed you on YouTube, you should be able to do any sort of calculation for your labs. Okay, thanks for watching and uh, please consider subscribing.